I recently took a trip to the great states of Montana and Wyoming to visit my best friend. And I almost met Harrison Ford. Well, it wasn't that close, but... So I have a best friend currently attending school and living in Montana, as some of you may remember from a vlog that I did last summer. If you don't remember, then I am insulted and I'll never forgive you. Well, I might, but... We'll see. Anyway, he is just a lovely gent, and Montana is a spectacular place. A real looker, if you know what I mean. The state and the scenery, not my best friend. Why would... No, I, come on. I mean, he does well for himself, I won't lie. But I, that's not... I, this is off topic. So, this summer, my parents and I decided to take a sojourn to Montana once again, and also Wyoming this time. In addition to seeing my friend, we made stops at Yellowstone National Park and Grand Teton National Park, both beautiful places, as well as Jackson Hole, Wyoming, where another national treasure can be found. Harrison Ford. Yes, the actor. Sometimes he's there, but I'll get to that in a bit. First, just to take you through the trip, we started off traveling through Idaho to Missoula, Montana, where we stayed in a hotel room with a beautiful balcony overlooking the inside of the hotel. Literally, I, it was a bizarre setup. I don't even know why they did that. How is that useful? Really, I mean, you're gonna walk to the balcony in your hotel room and open it and say, man, I really need some fresh air. I'm just gonna step out onto this balcony here. <sighs> The same air. Mmm. Just like the hotel room, because it's also the hotel. Hey, if you look out far enough, you can actually make out a giant expanse of yellowish green carpet. Exactly the same as the carpet in here that we're standing on now. Neat! Anyway, it's a mystery to me, the whole design of that building and the intention. But I didn't get any footage of it because I was too confused, so I apologize. Next, we journeyed to Yellowstone. Upon entering the park, we were immediately greeted by a friendly local. And I could not believe it. He or she just casually sauntered up to our car as if to say, We're all friends here. I mean, you don't own the road. Me road as su road, you know what I mean? I took four years of Spanish, so I should probably just use the Spanish word for road here. But in my defense, I didn't think about that until presently. Anyway, so this Yellowstonian just ambles over, calm as a sleeping baby, and greets us. Luckily, I got some footage of it. Hello, sir. He sure is. He's probably seen thousands of cars. He is so calm. Bless his heart. This is awe-inspiring. My awe is being inspired. Hi, buddy. I apologize for the vertical orientation of the footage you just saw. In hindsight, it's not ideal, but I am not well versed in bison photography or in photographing things while being warmly welcomed into the bosom of nature's bounty. So I got nervous. Anyway, we saw all sorts of things at Yellowstone. Huge trees, towering, gorgeous cliffs, bubbling mud baths that looked like the one James Bond pushed the fake Blofeld into at the beginning of Diamonds Are Forever. I'm sure everyone got that reference. Brilliantly colorful hot springs and pools. Uh, stones that were um, yellow. And we saw Old Faithful, the famous geyser. And I don't mean to complain, but technically it went off about 10 minutes later than predicted. So, how faithful is it, really? I mean, you tell me. Though I'm probably being too harsh. I deeply apologize to the bosom of nature's bounty that welcomed me so warmly. Anyway, basically the park was extraordinary, gorgeous, eye-opening, and inspiring, to say the least. And I recommend it extremely highly for anyone who has never been. It's nice to see nature that isn't, you know, destroyed by humanity's foolishness and gluttony. Moving on, we then headed to Bozeman, where we met up with my old friend, and I had a heck of a hootenanny. Hoo boy! There were some wild times, I admit, and I naturally put on a flannel shirt as soon as I got there, and just as naturally felt a constant stab of shame in the back of my mind over my lack of beard. Apparently admission into the state of Montana as a male requires a beard at least as long as that of a casual hipster, and I had nothing more than PG stubble. The voice in my head was saying, Your follicles are not worthy! Go back to the suburbs, you imbecile! It's a mean voice. Here is some Bozeman footage and photos, including pictures from my lovely little hike we took. A lot of ducks. We did the hike to the College M. She's a beaut. Yeah.
All right. It was fantastic to get to see my buddy. We always have a great time. And it was really good to get to meet some of his buddies there. At last, we traveled to the famed Jackson Hole, Wyoming, which would probably be pretty cool on its own because the concept of the cowboy never really died there, but is also the most honorable and magical place on earth because it features a ranch belonging to a certain last name Ford, first name Harrison. Harrison Ford. It's Harrison Ford. Arguably America's greatest anything. Actor, real-life environmental activist, champion, and orangutan protector. Look it up. Fake president who knows how to defend himself on board a plane. Space smuggler who can make the Kessel Run in less than 12 parsecs. Adventurous archaeologist who has a knack for whip cracking. And real-life pilot, yeah, who even when he unfortunately crashes, emerges practically unscathed. I mean, fill in the blank. You name it, he's done it, pretty much. He is literally a hero to us all. And he played my favorite fictional character of all time, Dr. Henry Jones Jr., aka Indiana Jones. I know I said it already, but I'll say it again because it's double important. Not that it's his greatest accomplishment ever, but it might be. Who's to say I am? I just said it. Anyway, I'm good. I'm fine. And uh, I'm cool. Anyway, so Mr. Ford spends part of his time at his ranch in Wyoming. And while I wasn't able to track down the ranch itself, I respect his privacy too much and my GPS wasn't working. I was sure I'd see him socializing about town in Jackson, you know, mingling with the locals. But somehow, everywhere I went, I couldn't find him. Harrison? Harrison? He's not here. I saw a giant archway made out of elk antlers. A lot of antlers. A stagecoach. Bless them. A friendly moose. Sorry. A cowboy hat that wasn't flattering on me personally. Yep. Howdy. A literal physical plush poop emoji. A poop emoji pillow. And other things. Why water rafting bears? Because bears like to raft too. But no Harrison! <clears throat> Sorry, um, I'm good. I was crushed. I mean, how could my hero let me down like this? But then I realized that it might not be his fault. I mean, there is a slim chance that he didn't know I was coming to Wyoming at that time. Or also, you know, that he doesn't know I exist. And I may have been there one of the many months of the year that he doesn't actually live there. But one of those things might have happened, possibly. Very small chance. In short, I understand. And I hope I get to see him soon. And hey, it was a doozy of a trip. Anyway, the real highlights were obviously seeing my best friend and the National Park visits. And perhaps that's the lesson here. While sometimes you might take a trip with a specific goal or destination in mind, almost always it's the journey there that's worth enjoying. As I'm sure you've been told many times before. And if your ultimate goal is to meet one of the most famous American actors alive today, and one of the greatest human beings on this planet, that may be setting your sights just a tad too high. So instead, just enjoy the ride. It'll be worth it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go write my 637th fan letter to Harrison Ford, asking him why he wasn't around when I visited Wyoming. But I'm sure he'll respond to each one, in turn. I mean, this last one especially, because it included a watercolor painting of his face that I made using dry paint and my own tears. That's normal, right? I'll catch you later. Chewie, get us out of here! <laughs>